Okay, we are doing another, or sorry, this is the first Magic 14 draft. I'm doing the draft instead of the sealed because the prize structure for the pre-release sealed is pretty crappy. Um, also, I've played this live, so I kind of know what's going on. So, Witch Stalker is actually quite good. Uh, every time I draft live, I end up in blue. I'm trying not to do that. Not that I haven't had good results with it, but um, yeah. So this is, I think is actually probably worth a little bit too, um, but just 3-3 three, three hex proof is the best card in this pack. It's a little bit of a weak pack. Like um, this, this sliver is pretty is decent. This is decent. This is, that can be pretty important if you get the black red sacrifice thing going mystic is fine this is a pretty weak pack uh, happy to take the witch stalker and let somebody else have the next pick here uh, green's really the, probably the best color in this set I think it gets drafted pretty heavily um, which is why I think blue's the second best color and it doesn't get drafted that often so um, you can take rumbling bail up this probably the best card here like the frost breath can be uh, really quite a blowout um, Dawn Strike Paladin's fine uh, Master Diversions Shock, Time Ebb also fine but I think we'll just stay on color uh, you know you can even do mono green or something which would be pretty, uh, pretty good um, if I wasn't going to take that I'd probably take the frost breath or the time ebb, or the shock. Shock's fine too. Two damage is not a whole lot, but you know, I'm happy to take the four four. All right, so there's lay of the land. I'm not gonna take that. Not a while. We're not wild about that. Uh, Blood Baron or Battle Sliver. I think Battle Sliver is probably the best thing here. You can get some sliver action, red green, maybe splash into white. Um, it's kind of dull in this set. There's very little color fixing, so if you want to splash something, you basically have to be green. You know, you can be green, red, splash, white, whatever. That works. Um, I'm trying to see what this works best for you. I guess I'll just do this. Keep it all in frame. Yep. So another rumbling Baloth or marauding Mulhorn. Um, I think I'll just take the Baloth again. It's better um, in general. Frost breath, Sentinel sliver. Yeah, maybe we just end up being mono, mono, mono green, or splash a little bit for some sliver action. Let's see. Uh, green is a little bit. It does have some. You know, has the best threats, but ha as typical of uh, the set has the fewest amount of ways to interact with what your opponent's doing. Um, it still has some, but uh, like, especially now it's, uh, what is it, the uh, Hunt the Weak is your, you get a plus one, plus one counter and you fight something, and then you get like some giant growths, etc. But that's about it. So we'll see. Um, I think just having the best threats is probably the best thing. Um, and also you can get, s see if we can get some sliver action going. Like, the problem I think with slivers is, uh, well A, there's not like a terribly large number of them, there's there's a decent enough number, but uh, also like they're just fine on their own, like they're not going to float to just the person who wants to collect all the slivers. They're going, like you know, anyone who's in red, 5-3 for 5. That's pretty good in this set. This set is uh, comparatively a little bit underpowered. Um, so, ooh, Fire Shrieker. Yeah. Uh, I was going to take the Giant Spider, which I like quite a bit. Um, Towering Intric was the card I drafted the most in Return to Ravnica. I just was either. Uh, it's two four with reach. It's a big giant stop sign and it can attack reasonably well. So but yeah. Double strike is 
probably the best um, creep, you know, regular creature keyword that uh, is in in most sets. So things are starting to drop a little bit. There's like a disperse is fine. I'm pretty sure the woodborne behemoth. It's um, there's it's almost like a cycle, I guess, of a. Uh, Kind of the five mana beaters you can get in all the colors. You have a Singer Vampire, a Sarah Angel, uh, the Air Servant, and I think this is the red one essentially. I think this is the worst one in general, but it's still fine. Um, you know, you'll get to eight lands a fair bit of time. This is a pretty slow set, so. Voracious Worm? Happy to take that, I think. It might just be mono green. We'll probably have to have to end up splashing a little bit into like red or something. We'll see. Um, yeah, black could be open here. Child of Night, Undead Minotaur, but happy to take a two drop with a uh, bears with upside. So now we have some options here. Um, doesn't really feel like we need to go to take the risk of getting a two for, two for one with an aura. Um, I'm going to take the Dawn Strike Paladin. If you end up going into white, he works great with the Fire Shrieker. Um, yeah, I'll take him. Let's see where we go with this. So we can take a Shimmering Grotto. Um, doesn't look like slippers are particularly open. We only t this is the only one we saw, I believe. No, we saw one in the first pack, but yeah. So we can take a sh shimmering grotto for splash something, or an angelic wall gives us another way to deal with flyers if we end up in white. Um, I'll take the grotto, I guess. This is interesting. Bubbling cauldron is um, an interesting engine. Uh, there's obviously the festering newt, whatever stuff you can get going. And it does look like black's a little bit open. Um, but there's also. Yeah, that's fine. There's also. Um, you can get the enchantments that anytime you gain. Or if you end a turn where you gain four life, you get a 4 4 angel. So anytime you can just sacrifice a, sacrifice one of your creatures and gain four life. Also, life gain helps power out, turn him to a six six or something. Um, flesh pulp or giant, eh. yeah. Uh, this set is strange in that um, for the most part, all the like normally you pay like six or seven mana, you get something that's pretty good, but you have to get up to six or seven mana. This set like this seven mana for a four four. With that can maybe you know kill a bear when it comes out. It's not not great, not very good. So, and then pay no heed is playable. Blessing is not really playable. So it looks like green white is what we do. How did I end up taking two basic lands? Oh, um, yeah, this is reasonable. So here's that Angelic Accord. Uh, this is a really good pack for black. Holy crap. If I could just like take Liturgy of Blood, Liturgy of Blood, Quag Sickness, Sing Your Vampire, and Corrupt, and pass the rest remainder of this pack, I would. Um, there's Ship and Dragon. If we still decide we want to go red. Um, otherwise, like in our colors, I guess Brindlebore is okay when you get the Voracious Worm. Uh, I'm not a big fan though. Um, I think I'll just take the Shiv and Dragon and maybe we end up in red. We're not com committed to, uh, not committed to white. And this is, I mean, this is this guy's been around forever for a reason. He was very good. Also, we do not want to play against him for sure. And there's a Chandra's Outrage, another Woodborne Behemoth, 
try and grow this. Hey, this is a little awkward. Fire, some other fire shaker. Wow. Um, let me just take another fire shrieker. It's quite good. Double strike is awesome. Shandra's outrage is also pretty good. It. If we take that, we're gonna pretty heavily commit to being green red. Because we've got three pretty good red cards. The white cards we picked up, I'm not wild about. So, I think that's reasonable. There's some more red cards here. No green. An elixir of immortality, which I do not care for. It's not the Dawn Strike Paladin. I don't like black, but I feel like it's being underdrafted in this set, so it's too late for that, though. Uh, Molten Birth is an interesting card. Um, I guess that's what we'll take here. I'll take another Dawn Strike Paladin. And hedge back into white, but I think it's time to uh, make the move into red. Another Shatter's Outrage kind of backs me up on that. Yeah. Green is probably getting cut going this way, but it was fine the other way, so. Pick up all the red here while we can. Hell of a Night Pack. It's an interesting card. Uh, Ragath and Fire Cat is probably what we want. I mean, put the Fire Shrieker on that, and it's just like crap. Crap on a stick for them. Um, Hell of a Night Pack is pretty good, though. It is kind of pretty heavy on the top end. Um, Fire Cat, let me just go ahead and hide the white. Um, how the night? Yeah, I think I think since we got the fire shrieker, we'll take it. Probably without the fire shrieker, we can go ahead and take the howl. Bog Rupert, which is fun. Okay, so no, or uh, I guess no. Like I'm not. Don't think I'll ever run Dragon Hatchling. It's just. You have to put your mana into it every turn if you want it to actually do anything. Actually, maybe the course, a quarter's shield? Um, slivers... I'm not wild about this equipment, but it is pretty reasonable. Um, especially when you got the Fire Shrieker also on there. You kind of put a lot of mana into one thing. All right, so in this case, there's Active Treason or Howl of the Night Pack. I think Howl of the Night Pack is what we want. Uh, Active Treason's really good if you've got black sacrifice effects. Without it, it's still fine. But I think we'll take a one Howl of the Night Pack. Won't take any more, but one is fine. Uh, plummet, lava axe, dragon. All right, so this is a pretty interesting card. I think it's reasonable, but I'm not a huge fan. But I'll take it over the rest of this pack. I think lava axe would be a second choice, and then plummet and whatever. Alright, so this is what we opened, and the Lightning Towns came back, which is not something I'm super happy about, but it um, does seem that red is reasonably open, at least. Stratonic Resonator. I might just rare draft that. Although Dark Favor, cutting Dark Favor, Show of Valor could be reasonable to... I'm assuming if it's passed this far, it's not worth anything. So I'll cut a uh, show of valor. Maybe there's some world where we end up splashing it. Uh, another lightning talons. Sure. There's a lot of really, or this is not one of the best ones, but there's a lot of good auras in the set. 
Uh, we are a little light on creatures, so hopefully we'll pick up some more there. We do have this, just kind of creature creaturey. Um, I guess I don't want to. No one ever runs this, so I'll cut the dress. Um, yeah, about rebirth can kind of do some stuff. So definitely want to pick up a lot more two drops. Probably not going to run the bubbling cauldron. Got some reasonable four drops, five drops, stuff there. I'll just really get out of here. So we need to creature up, which is a little bit uh, surprising considering I think it, like our first five picks were creatures. So there's a two drop. There's another sliver that's a little bit more interesting. Um, I think maybe just the sliver. Maybe we end up with a little splash of white or something. Probably not, but it doesn't look like our life gains uh, really turning out. I mean, we could run the festering or bubbling cauldron, but probably not. Probably not. Yeah, we didn't pick up any brindle boars or anything, so I'll take a mana with a sliver. Briar pack alpha is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Briar pack alpha is crazy good. It's just, you know, in general, any creature with it comes into play effect is kind of a, like a built in two for one. And like in this set, like four mana for a three, three is perfectly fine. You know, you end up running the, uh, whatever, it's a Minotaur or something, four mana, three, three. And red a lot. So the upside of the flash and the the plus two plus two is huge. Predatory sliver or hunt the weak. Um, I think we just need the two drop. We do have some other. We have other forms of of. Uh, we have two Chandra's outrages. Maybe we'll pick up a shock or something. So that means the hunt the weak is a little bit devalued. You can get, you can get gotten with the uh, hunt the weak. So we do have a couple slivers going. So we'll type predatory sliver. That's fine. Um, Brindle boar. We're a little heavy on threes already. Uh, he does work with the uh, voracious worm. There's a chance the voracious worm we open in the first pack t uh, eight tables, or we could just go with some sliver action. Get in a little late sliver action. Getting a tiny bit of thing here. Um, yeah, I'll take the ground sliver, ground whatever. Like a five, a seven mana for a five five in this set is actually like good, just because, yeah. So Ranger's Guile or Pitchburn Devils. Um, I'd rather have Giant Growth usually, but. Since we don't, they only have one combat trick so far. I'd like to get a second one. Um, Pitchburn Devils is fine as well. Uh, it does work a little bit better in decks that have some sort of sacrifice thing, but that is not us really. Another predatory sliver. Yep, that's the pick. Uh, the. Uh, I played this guy in, in one, uh, live pre-release, and uh, having to uh, discard before you draw is significantly, significantly worse than draw discard. And then there's another seven drop, which I'm not wild about. So we'll get on some sliver action and root walla, I think. Mm, how many real three drops? Yeah, we're not as heavy on three drops as I thought for some reason. So that's fine. A Woodborne Behemoth would also be perfectly acceptable, but Rootwalla is the pick. All right, 
Um, lava X. A lay of the land. Could run a lay of the land. Um, don't really need to. We're not splashing anything, but we do have a little bit of a tricky mana base. Not because we're a bunch of colors, but we've got double, 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 toil and trouble, cauldron burn, and whatever. Yeah, cauldron bubble. So I'll take it. Um, Verdant Haven, I guess. It's playable. We'll see how this comes together afterwards. Don't think we want another seven drop, another lightning talon, probably not. The combat trick, this is not one of the best combat tricks, but it usually works. It usually gets the job done. Uh, Academy Raider, sure. I think the, um, I'm not gonna run that. Lava X, probably not. Alters Reap, just cut, 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 cut. Um, what was I saying? I have no idea what I was saying now. But, yeah. Okay, I feel reasonable about this deck. Um, would have liked to pick up some more of the four drops. I'd like to get the beast and advocate of the beast thing going. The, this is from red green. But never saw an advocate of the beast. Uh, I guess we did pass one rumbling bail off. I run, 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 lay off one of the red balance. So let's throw this together. Maybe we play that, maybe we don't. Probably we don't. Um, try not to run that. We might not even run that. Um, might leave that for the sideboard. Yes, yeah, I'll loop that and get in. Uh, so that goes in, sure, let's just throw this stuff in, decide what I want later. I don't think we're going to run the Bobbling Cauldron. Okay, so this is what we got here. I was back in the mana cost. Alright, so I'm going to shrink this down. Can't drink it anymore. No. Hide over there. So Chandra's outrage. Separate out the spells. So probably yeah, we can cut molten birth because it doesn't really do much for us. I'm gonna consider this not a creature. Because it's kind of tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Alright. So. Let's check the stats on this. So we're a little bit lighter on the red. Problem with the red is there's a lot of double red. Uh, probably cut Molten Birth. I'll go ahead and cut Molten Birth. We don't have any way to do that much with one ones. Um, could almost consider Lay of the Land like a just as a as your 17th land if you ran 10 forests or something. It's a little tricky though. Uh, probably I'll just cut it. So, let's see. I think I do want to keep the Academy Raider. And a lightning talons, trying to combo them up, and also he works well with fire shrieker. Definitely don't want to cut any of this stuff. We could cut the ground shaker sliver, um, or maybe the howl of the night pack. Do have a couple sliver things going on, so yeah. Let's see if we cut the howl of the night pack. We're not running Timber Shimmering Grotto in this deck, that's for sure. Cut that. 
And then one more, so we got two, three combat tricks. Um, yeah, I cut the Halloween Knight back, I don't know if I expressed it, but because uh, probably going to be doing a 9-8 mana base just because uh, too much Devil Red, even though we're pretty heavily, heavily in favor of green in their colors. Uh, could cut a coarser shield. Vigilance is better than people think, though. So. Works well with him. Yeah. Alright, so. Maybe the dragon egg. Dragon egg's kind of awkward. Especially like if we have a dragon egg and a rumbling bailoth on the board. If we can't attack, then they probably can't attack either. At least on the ground. Um, yeah, this, we're pretty vulnerable to anything in the air. We only have. We have to kill that somehow. And then Chandra's Outrage. Yeah, we only have two burn spells. I'd definitely like to pick up a shock for sure. So, Verdant Haven. Yeah. So what I'm thinking about cutting last is that, that, that. Um, the Dragon Egg, I think, are the last options. Haven. I only have one thing that cares about the life. It's a little tricky to get to work with it. I'd have to have four lands, cast Verdant Haven, and then cast Voracious Worm. And then it's only it's only only a four four. It's still quite nice, but not that great. Um, fixing. We might need the fixing, just because I like I said the double double red. This can be tricky. Uh, Dragon Egg is just tricky because they can't. I feel like I should get rid of. I'm hmm. thinking probably get rid of either the Dragon Egg or the Corsair Shield. See, they don't work well together. If I give my creatures vigilance, they're not going to attack me and they're not going to trigger the Dragon Egg. So. I'm going to go cutting the Dragon Egg. That might be wrong, but it's still reasonable. All right, so I still think a 9-8 is probably the way to go. Um, it is a little tricky. Like I said, this, this, this set does not encourage creative mana bases, and because there's a fair bit of double casting costs, Double colors and the casting costs. So, yeah, nine eight seems fine. Suggest, I suggest that. I just want to have as few hands I have to mulligan as possible. So, and uh, most of the double color stuff doesn't come up until at least turn four. So, that's something. Maybe you should bring in, because we do have two pieces of ramp, and there's seven drop. Um, do you have anything else that's high casting cost? Bring in Howl of the Night Pack, because we do have two, two rampy spells. Oops. And this can actually ramp ramp, although ramp ramp into Howl of the Night Pack is usually not great. Um, 10-7 is a little bit better actually because this guy fixes and that fixes. I think actually 10-7. 10-7 is a little bit better just because our green can create red. So it still gives us um, 9. 
Yeah, we still have nine nine ways to create red mana. And so we put in Howl the Night Pack now that we're up to ten force is reasonable. And then we could cut in the Courser Shield potentially, or what we're what else was I thinking about? Thunderstrike or the Verdant Haven. Wouldn't cut the Verdant Haven to run extra seven drops. Um, that Thunderstrike. I think probably get rid of the Thunderstrike. Mm, we are getting less, 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 and less red as we go. But green's the best color anyway, so. Um, Alright, sure, we'll run it like this. I will see you in round number one.